Good afternoon, pet parents of Regina. We are about to do our Furry Fridays because it's Friday. Did anybody notice we missed last Friday? That was my fault. Um, I got tied up in the morning and then I ended up getting busy, busier in the afternoon and I lost all track of time. And so then I thought, well, maybe I would do a So You Know Saturday. And then Saturday turned into a bit of a gong show. And I thought, well, I could do a So You Know Sunday. And then that didn't happen either. So I figured today for Furry Friday, we're going all in on treats. And I'm, I've got my trusty tripod here to help me out so I'm not jiggling all around you guys, but I need two hands to do this. And as I was putting my stuff together, I got mad. I got mad because of the treats that are out there. And so this morning, I put a post out there to ask, how do you choose your treats? Because there are some similarities between how we choose a good dry food and how we choose treats. And at the end of the day, even if treats are just that, they're just treats, they're not getting them, hello, Kita girl and Tabitha mommy. Um, they're, not, um, they're not something that we feed every day as a meal all the time. No, I shouldn't say that. Zayner gets treats every day, but hello, Daphne. Um, I also make sure that the treats that Zayner is getting our healthy treats, our low ingredient or single ingredient treats. And for him, hi Carolyn, out for a walk with Gracie, we'll listen as we go, perfect. You can educate the rest of the pet parents in the neighborhood. Um, with Zayner, because he's a little dude at five pounds, I have to be very careful with the calories that he also gets from his treats. And I made that mistake when I first got Zayner. I didn't know I was treating him like I treated my big dogs. And I'm gonna admit to you guys, I fed some of these treats I'm gonna talk to you about um, cause I didn't know any better because the marketing wizards, okay? They do a fantastic job of making us believe that we are giving healthy, wholesome, good treats. And why wouldn't you want to? Because you love your pets and yes, you do. But this is why it's even more important for us to be very diligent in looking at what goes into those treats, okay? So, first I'm gonna talk to you, hi Lori, <coughs> pardon me. First I'm gonna talk to you guys, and I'm gonna talk loud because I'm by the freezers, my earphones haven't come yet, and I know that when I get away from the phone, it's quiet for you guys, so I'm gonna grab this stuff off the back counter, I'm gonna bring it to you, I'm gonna show you. And I'm gonna start with the treats that we want to avoid, okay? We don't want to feed these treats because I'm gonna tell you guys right now, it goes from awful to even worse than you could imagine. That's these bad treats. And these unfortunately are some of the most popular treats out there that pet parents every day buy unknowingly that they're that they're feeding their pets toxic chemicals. Hello, Ms. Carla. Um, and I did it too. I did it before I knew. And when we know better, then we can do better. So these are the treats that I want you to avoid. And what I want you to do when you're looking to find treats for your puppers and your kitties, you got to flip that bag over, right? You wouldn't just grab some random food off the shelf and throw it down your kid's throat. So we, we don't want to do that with our pups either because the pet food industry says if it's not good enough for people, it's fine for the dog. I disagree. You guys know this. I get all heated up about this, but I'm going to show you from awful to absolutely horrendous with regards to treat choices, okay? So you see, you see my pile of bad stuff back here. Milk bones. This is backwards. Sorry, you guys. Okay. Milk bones. Milk bone, okay, <laughs> this is as fair as I'm gonna be with milk bones. They have a variety of products out there and some of them are more horrific than others, okay? 
but I didn't say any of them are good. This one in particular, out of all the milk bone products that I could find, this one had the least amount of harmful ingredients, but you know what it's got in it? What all milk bones have in them? Paint. Remember we talked about this with food? If your food has dyes or color, it says color, added color. The dog doesn't care what color their treat is, we do. And the, and the food manufacturers know that, so they're trying to appeal to us when they add color. But when they add color, you guys already know, that's paint. We don't wanna see color or dyes in our pet's food or treats, okay? So this one, gone, get rid of it, get out of here. All right, next milk bone product. What is this? Soft and chewy, okay? What do we always talk about when we're looking at pet food? Um, pet feed, right? You guys know that. What do we always try to avoid? We want to reduce the carbs. I apologize. If, if that's any of you guys phoning, I apologize for not answering. Um, but I will return the call. Anyways, we always want to avoid carbs as much as possible. We want to eliminate or reduce carbs. Reduce or eliminate carbs entirely. Why? Because they have no biological requirement for carbs. And what happens to carbs when they get into the pet's body? They turn to sugar. And what does sugar do? Sugar feeds disease. It increases inflammation. It causes a variety of health problems. We don't want sugar in our pet's diets and we look for ways to avoid or prevent putting it in their diets. Third ingredient in these babies, sugar. We also talked about how was our food preserved. We wanna make sure that our food is always preserved with a natural preservative, like a rosemary extract or a vitamin E or a vitamin C or tocopherols. We want to make sure it's natural, naturally preserved, healthy. What does this have? BHA. I'm, I'm gonna come up with my own words for what BHA stands for, but you guys, BHA is in embalming fluid. It's in jet fuel. It's used in rubber. That's what makes the rubber bouncy because it keeps it soft. It's used in cosmetics. It's used in disinfectants. It's used in um, insecticides. Like it, it, BHA, we do not want in our pet's food anywhere. Good day, Mr. Phillips. We don't wanna see that it's in our food and we don't wanna see that it's in our treats. Now, the FDA, which is the federal, the, uh, sorry, the American Food and Drug Association, they have said, well, BHA in small doses isn't that harmful. <laughs> really? So if I just drank a little bit of jet fuel every day, I'd still be okay? No, no. And, and the reason that it's not just in small quantities for our pets is because if we're serving a food that's preserved with BHA, they eat it daily. If this is potty treat because, hey, we've gone outside and done business, or we went to our bed when we said we were supposed to, or when we were asked to, and we get a treat, we are getting this daily. We don't want that. Lindsay is crying, 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 non-happy tears. Uh, and Kita's saying, or bad, harmful, awful. Yep, yep, BHA. You see BHA or BHT or a Thoxiquin. If you see any of those three ingredients, throw it away, put it back on the shelf, do not buy, do not feed to the pets, okay? I get all fired up, you guys, I get all fired up. So this one, gone, get it out of there. All right, milk bone, here we go again. Poor milk bone, I'm beating up on you. Well, change your ingredients. Hmm? Be a little bit more transparent about what's going in my pet's body if you wanna sell me your stuff. This list gets a little bit longer. So what are these? These are brushing chews. So this is, I read the ingredients on my food, why not do it for Sophie? Exactly, exactly. That's what I want all, all of us to do. Treats, food, read the ingredients. We've gotta know what's going in there, okay? So these little small petite brushing chews, so these would be Zaner size. First of all, I'm gonna flip this around you guys and I'm gonna show you, well, it's backwards, but still all of these ingredients, okay? That's what makes up this. 
And the reason I point that out is because the dental chews that I brought into the store, the reason I did is because instead of having a list from here to BC of ingredients, it's a very short list. And we know what those ingredients are. We recognize those ingredients in that dental chew. These, not so much, okay? But one of the ingredients in here is powdered cellulose. My father and I got in this debate this weekend. I don't know why he doesn't trust my knowledge. But when I said most weight loss foods include powdered cellulose, which is sawdust, literal sawdust, you guys. So be very, very careful. I know this isn't about treats with weight loss food. Flip that bag over, take a look. Do you see powdered cellulose? You're feeding your animal sawdust if there's powdered cellulose in that food. So in this treat, powdered cellulose. Mmm, take some of that puppy, chomp on some sawdust for a while. Clean your teeth, not so much. Um, chicken byproduct, okay? What do we know about byproducts? When we know it's a byproduct, we know that they, this is the food manufacturer saying, not good enough for people. God, I wouldn't eat that. Feed it to the dog. Uh-uh. So chicken byproducts in here. Ick. We don't want byproducts. And BHA. Surprise, surprise. Preserving with BHA. Give me some more jet fuel. Get out of here. All right. We're getting on to the awful, 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 you guys. We're getting worse. Keith is saying brushing chews are the bane of my existence. I told you how I li how. Literally none of them except the ones you carry in store upset Keita's digestive system. Yeah, because of the crap that they put in there, right? We want to keep those dental chews. I mean, ultimately, and we've talked about this, you guys all know, the raw meaty bones, those are Mother Nature's toothbrush. We've got other options. If you don't want a raw meaty bone being chewed on your living room carpet, we've got other things. But dental sticks, we want to, when we see ingredient lists that go on for miles, get rid of it. But absolutely look at it. Make sure you know what's in there. And I guarantee when it's got a great big long list like that, you don't want that stuff. All right. Bacon strips. Mmm, bacon. Everybody loves bacon. Ooh, where's the bacon? Your dog wants bacon. That's what they tell you. This is not bacon. This is not bacon. Glycerin. Used in skincare products. I'm going to rub it on my face. I'm going to take a bacon strip. I'm going to rub it on my face because that's the same thing. It's in skincare products. We don't want to feed our pets that. Sugar listed right on the ingredients. What are we trying to avoid in our pet's diet? Sugar. Right on, our, right on the ingredient label is listed sugar. BHA. Surprise, surprise. They preserve it with jet fuel. Mmm, embalming fluid. So yummy. And color, paint. They've painted the bacon strips so it looks... Oh, right, Lindsay? Mike, Mike, if you're watching, no more begging strips for the pups, ever, ever. And this is the thing. Our non-pet parent friends, with all the best intentions, go out and they say, oh, I want to get Zane a little treat. And they come over with begging strips or snossages or pepperonis. Thank you. Thank you, friend. Maybe let me educate them a little bit. And I'll just tell you, this is not good for my dog. In the garbage it goes. Bacon strips, okay? Glycerin, skin cream, sugar, don't want the sugar. BHA, jet fuel, color, paint, paint, right in there. Get it out of here. Here we go, pepperonis. This list got long. This list got long. So what is this? Beef flavored pepperonis. A little meaty, treaty stick. No, nope. no it's not. Glucose fructose, okay? What is glucose fructose? Sugar. Another fancy way to say sugar, but you know where it comes from? Cornstarch. Do you guys eat cornstarch? I avoid cornstarch. Any recipe that I've ever tried to make, and believe me, I'm not a cook, but I'm always looking for the easiest recipe out there because I can't cook. But when it asks for cornstarch, I will search for another recipe. Cornstarch is like glue in your system. So we don't want to eat, we don't want to eat cornstarch. I don't want to feed it to Zane either. Um, but what cornstarch also does for us is it raises our blood sugar. Why? Because it's sugar. 
So we don't want our dogs eating that because if anything, we want to reduce their blood sugar. They don't have a need for sugar. We don't want that. Um, another thing about cornstarch, you guys, I made notes because this one is long. Um, it's full of carbs. Hmm. Carbs? We don't want carbs ever. We want to reduce and eliminate carbs as much as possible. And cornstarch, glucose, fructose, full of carbs. Oh, by the way, down the ingredient panel, more cornstarch. Yay! Give me more of that. No, we don't want it. Propylene glycol. This is used to absorb the water so that whatever liquid they've put in here doesn't leave some gooey puddle in the bottom of the bag. But it is also known to cause seizures, nausea, and vertigo. And the other thing that they talk about when they talk about propylene, propylene glycol is that it causes some disturbing effects. What the heck is that? What is disturbing effects? I don't want to take a chance that Zane has disturbing effects from eating this. Um, BHA, preserved with BHA. Mmm, yum, give me some more embalming fluid. And paint, more paint to make it look like meat. It's not meat. Get it out of here. All right, kitty parents. Ooh, shake that bag. They, they bust through walls. They jump off of two-story buildings. They, they fly through the room to get their temptation. Anyways, they might like it, but your kid probably likes to eat jello powder right out of the box, too. Is that healthy? No, pure sugar. So, chicken byproducts. Again, what have we talked about with byproducts? Literally, I've never heard of pepperoni until now, but gross. Yeah, totally gross. Gross. Um, Justin, if you're watching, if you ever watch again, I don't want Bear ever eating pepperonis because those were his favorite treats. No pepperonis. Chicken byproducts. We know byproducts are not good because they're not good for us. They're not fit for our consumption, so give them to the pets. Don't give them to the pets. Chicken byproducts. This also has animal fat. Awesome. What kind of animal? Where did that animal come from? Did it die in a zoo? Was it a euthanized pet? Was it roadkill? That is what can be an animal in pet food. When they say animal or meat, we don't know what it is. We don't know what kind of animal. We don't know where that protein is coming from. The next ingredient, dried meat byproduct. Awesome. What kind of meat? Where did it come from? What is it? And I know it sounds gross and I know it sounds bad, you guys, but honest to God, animal or meat, when it is unnamed, it can be what is referred to as 4D meats, 4D, diseased, dying, dead, disabled, okay? So a cow dropped dead in a field, nobody knows why, good enough for pet food. Who cares what happened to him? Who cares how long he's been sitting there for? Who cares how bad the flesh has rotten, <clears throat> rotted? That's meat. That's animal. Oh, a, a zoo animal passes of God knows what captivity or who knows what. That's meat. Good enough for the pets. I disagree. I know you guys do too. Um, and then finally, close to the very end, we've got more turkey byproduct meal. Okay. If the kitties like these, find something different. Find something else that they like because we don't want to feed them this stuff, okay? So we're going to get it out of here. So what do we want to look for? And this is what I talk to you guys about when you come in the store. We're looking for quality new new ingredients, quality ingredients in our food as much as we are in our treats. Treats is something that they get daily. It's not like, you know, you and I may not have a chocolate bar every day or we may not have a Sunday every day, but our pets usually get treats every day because we use them for training. We use them for living together and achieving the correct behavior that we're looking for from the animal. So treats is something that they get regularly. So we want to make sure that if we're going to give them treats, we're giving them the best treats that we can and that they're healthy. 
Carolyn says, Kelly will only eat freeze-dried chicken sheets. She's pretty picky. Most kitties are, and that's awesome, because I don't want to hear that she's eating temptations. I'd have to come to your house and confiscate them myself. And Kita says, I love that you're just throwing them off to the side. I'll pick them up later. They're garbage. They're garbage. If I had a big garbage here, I'd throw them in there. And oh, my Bauer loves his greenies. Daphne, we're going to change that. Because that is one of the reasons I didn't bring greenies in. Because the ingredient list is so long, full of unknown, unpronounceable words. We don't know what it is. We don't want Bauer eating it. Okay? We can talk later. I want to give you some examples. So, bacon. Bacon strips are over there somewhere. But this is bacon jerky. And... Here's our tiny little ingredient list. Okay, pork, pork liver, honey, buckwheat flour, sea salt, chia seeds, apple cider vinegar. These are things we know. These are things we know. This is a healthy bacon strip alternative that is about 10,000 times better for them. Okay, here's another pork treat. This is a dehydrated pork treat. Pork, chickpeas, molasses, sunflower, Sea salt, mixed tocopherols, rosemary extract. Huh. No added color, no jet fuel. What? Yeah, because it's a natural, healthy treat. Okay? Fruitables. We've got lots of fruitables because the fruits, fruits and veggies are the healthy carbs that we can give to them. So I carry a lot of the fruitables and I carry them in jerkies. I carry them in chewy treats. I carry them in crunchy treats because fruitables are a healthy option for a treat. Daphne, I know I'm looking at the boxes. Other treats are healthy, but not the greenies. I know, I know. Get those greenies out of there. Um, okay, so, ah, I will note, um, with our healthy fruits and veggies treats, when, so glycerin, when it's a named glycerin like this, vegetable glycerin, then I know where it came from. And I know that they don't put that into cosmetics, okay? So, and if they do, they're healthy organic cosmetics. But another healthy alternative. Finally, and this is usually my preference, okay? This is a single ingredient treat. We have many. It's a matter of what does your puppy like? This is, it's gross to us, but they love it. Beef lung. That's it. Look at my ingredients. Beef lung. That's it. Baked beef lung. One ingredient. We know exactly what they're getting. These are the same. These are our freeze-dried single ingredient treat. So, ingredients. Deboned chicken. And then there's beef. And there's turkey. And there's salmon one ingredient and it's protein so <laughs> yay no added colors no added jet fuel or <laughs> bha bht ethoxquin none of that um we're not seeing byproducts in there we're not seeing mystery meat that we have no idea where it came from or what type of animal it is or even if, if it was even a healthy good piece of protein so I want you guys to remember, when we're looking for treats, attack your treat shopping the same way that you attack your food shopping. How is it preserved? What kind of proteins are there? Is it named? Are they adding colors? If it's full of a bunch of crap, you can be guaranteed there's carbs. Now, you can't necessarily figure out carbs on a treat the same way that you can on food, but I'm telling you right now, if your list of ingredients gets longer and longer and longer, guaranteed you got carbs in there because it's filler. And, and what they're trying to do is they're, find, they're trying to find ways that, hey, you know what, we can make this somewhat protein rich by not adding meat if we add all this other crap. We don't want that. They're meat eaters, we want healthy treats, again, if you think about it for yourself, a healthy treat for us could be a piece of fruit or it could be that cup of vegetables or it could be, you know, or a cup of yogurt. It doesn't always have to be the chocolate bar. Now that said, I'm not saying occasionally it's okay to feed this nonsense. I, never. 
I, I'm not gonna say the name of the store, but Zayner and I went off to a store in the city that he was allowed in. And as I was paying attention to the shelf, the employee came over because pets are allowed in their store, which awesome, I think more stores should do that. But, and, the, and, and I don't fault the employee, he doesn't know that their store isn't about pet nutrition, but they were giving out those soft little chewy milk bones. And of course, Zayner's a savage, he gobbled it down, he's always gonna take the food. But he gave him the treat, the soft little milk bone, and within 15 minutes of us leaving, Zayner was throwing up the red from this treat. Like that's, it looked like he was, he wasn't throwing up blood, but it looked like he was. And I'll tell you why, because he's not used to that crap anymore. And I don't feed him that crap anymore. And, and it's paint. So not even occasionally, we're not doing those crappy treats even occasionally. We're going to stick to healthy treats. You know what, if you're at home and you have cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, cucumbers, green beans, Brussels sprouts, kale, spinach, make them like that. If they don't already, lots do. Use that as a treat. That's a way better option than something with a list of ingredients my arm long, okay? All right, you guys. I knew I was gonna get heated up about this, so I apologize. Um, but I don't apologize. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. What is that? Sorry, not sorry. That's what I'm doing because I don't want you guys feeding that kind of stuff. Sophie loves kale. That's fantastic. Saner doesn't like kale. He'll take it, but then he spits it out in the living room. Um, but we, if they'll eat, if they'll eat veggies, do that as a treat. And then if you need some, some high reward treats, get those single ingredient protein treats if we want those high rewards. Um, Bauer loves fresh veggies, has them often, awesome. Carolyn, I love that you are so passionate about this. I'm the same way. I know, I knew you would be. Like I, there, there's so, so many things out there that we are just not told as pet parents. So it has become my mission to get the word out there, let more pet parents know about what's going into our pets because we know we can extend their lives through nutrition but we got to understand the nutrition first and the pet food industry doesn't help us with that, okay? So you guys have a great weekend. I thank you for tuning in. I appreciate that you spend this time with me every week. I apologize for missing last week. Um, I do have, if you're looking for this information kind of without my theatrical antics, um, it's I do have the five top treats that you want to stay away from on our blog. If you go to our website, at the bottom of the page, you're gonna see Beyond the Bowl. That's our blog. I've got lots of good information in there. Um, I needed you 10 years ago. I know Daphne, I needed to know this too, <laughs> but I know it now. So, and you know what? As pet parents, every time we know better, we can do better. That's what I believe. So it's just a matter of constantly learning. But if you guys wanna see the treat information, you wanna see it written out, if you'd prefer to observe it in black and white, on our blog and it's the five treats you must never feed, okay? And I talk about these ones, or I guess they're over there that I've thrown on the floor and will now throw in the garbage. All right, so you guys have a great weekend. We will definitely see you next week. And if you do have questions or you need any more answers, you know where we are, pop by, give us a call, shoot me a message. I'm always happy to help you, happy to help you guys. And I will chat with you soon, okay? Have a great weekend, bye-bye.